Hi, this is Matt. I'm going to show you how to implement a search-based site directory step-by-step -step in this video series. If you haven't read the associated blog post called Stop Using the Property Bag, please do. In each of these videos, we're going to take each bit of the problem and kind of pull it apart so you can understand how to implement it out of the box in any SharePoint environment without any custom code. Later on, I'll show you some efficiencies to how to make it go faster. But in this first video, we're going to create a custom content type with site columns. So when you create a custom content type, you have to begin by creating site columns. So we'll do that, and then we'll create that custom content type in the content type hub. This will make that content type available to all of the sites in my SharePoint tenant and SharePoint on-prem if your SharePoint Farm administrators have set up the managed metadata service correctly, but I'll show you that. Then we're going to publish the enterprise content type. That's where we're going to end this video, and then in future videos we're going to continue to build on this knowledge. So step one, creating the site content type. Now before we get rolling, let me give you a preview of what we're actually trying to accomplish. I've already introduced this solution to my SharePoint on-prem farm. So Ordinarily, you're going to be searching for things like sites, and you would do that by using a query such as content class equals STS site. This will return all of the site collection objects that you have access to. Likewise, I can use STS web and find every web object that I have access to. These are the actual sites that contain the content, so you may see multiple URLs along the same site collection in this particular collection of results. The challenge is that these don't look very good, and I want a much better, a much more robust experience when I'm searching for content. So for example, I'll create a new content type that I can search for specifically. And I call that a site catalog item. Now I'm never going to expect my end users to type in this kind of query, but what I want to show you right now by way of a preview is that I have now this custom display template with a custom look and feel to it and even custom branding that shows me what's going on in these sites so that I now have a search ability, the capability to search for sites that I have access to in this way. So we're going to go ahead and replicate this in Office 365. Now you may not realize it, but in Office 365 you have pre-provisioned a content type hub. So if you go to your tenant name, sites slash content type hub, it should bring up a site collection if you have access to it. Now on-prem, this can be anywhere and it really falls on your administrators to determine where this content type hub is. If I go into Manage Service Applications as a Farm Administrator and I go to the Manage Metadata Service, I'm not going to click on it, I'm going to choose it. And from here I choose Properties, scroll to the bottom, and I see that my content type hub is intranet.doghousetoys.com slash site slash content type hub. So it's very similar to the structure in Office 365. But this could be any content type hub, any SharePoint site. If it's not configured, this will be a text box that your administrator could type a URL into, and then you could use it. But this is how you would find out where your content type hub is. Okay, back to Office 365. Now, once I'm in the content type hub, it doesn't really matter what I do here, because the only thing, the only purpose for this site is to create new content types. So I'm going to go into Site Settings. And in order to create my content type, I first have to create site columns. So I'm going to choose site columns, and then I'm going to create a new site column for each of the fields that I want to use in my custom content type. 
So if you've read the blog post, you know that I already have some requirements done. The first one is going to be called site description, and this is going to be multiple lines of text. I'm going to create a new group for my content type columns, and these are going to be my site catalog columns. I'll leave the defaults and choose OK. So I now have my first column. If I choose the group site catalog columns, I'll see site description. In here I can go in now, I can add a space so that it looks a little bit better. And I'll choose OK. Now what I'm going to do is create the rest of the site columns according to the requirements that I have from the blog post. In my case, what I've done is created a separate taxonomy term store group that contains the different manage metadata fields that I plan to use. So in my case, for this one, I'm just going to choose the site department and then choose OK. You may be asking yourself why I'm going to the trouble of creating the site column name without any spaces and then adding the space later. I'll get to that in a later segment, but let's just say it makes it a lot cleaner when we start working with those column names in search. So we've created our new collection of, of site columns. Now what we have to do is create a new content type and associate the site columns with it. I'm going to go to site settings. I'm going to go to site content types. And then here I'm going to create a new site content type. Now the list of content types um, that are here, these groups, they're different than the list of columns. So you won't see your group. You have to recreate that. In our case, this is going to be called a site catalog item. Now you can use spaces here. I prefer not to, and I'll show you why in a little bit. This is going to be based on list content types, and I'm simply going to base it on the item because I'm going to use the title attribute, and that's all. And then I'll create a new group, and this is going to be our enterprise content types. And I'm going to choose OK. Once you've created the content type, then you can go ahead and add columns. Now you remember that we already had the title because we descended from the item. So now what we're going to do is add from existing site columns and then quite simply choose our site catalog columns and then add them. Now my preference is to add them in order, not that it really matters, but that's just me. So that's all there is to it. We've created our site catalog item content type, and now we've got the site columns associated with that content type. So the next order of business is to publish this content type. And to make this content type available for publishing, you choose manage publishing for this content type. If you don't see this link, it means that either you're not in the content type hub or the content type hub publication feature is not turned on for this site collection. 
It's marked for publish. You'll notice that it has not been published yet. So I'm simply going to choose OK here, and that will publish my content type. Now there is a timer job that runs in the background. It generally runs every 30 minutes to publish the content types out to the sites. So in just a moment, we'll come back and we'll check and see if this content type was correctly published. All right, so a little bit of time has passed. And if we return to site content types, I can choose my enterprise content types and the site catalog item. And what I ought to see under manage publishing is a successful publication date. And so in this case, we have successfully published. Then I can test this by going to another site collection and looking at the site settings for this other site collection. So this is my golden retriever site. And if I go into site content types here, I'll have a group for enterprise content types and it'll have my site catalog item. If I open that up, it's an exact copy of the site catalog item that I created previously. And likewise, if I go look at my site columns, because the site columns had to come along for the ride, my site columns have the site catalog columns, and those are my columns. So this is working correctly. The beauty of this is that if I create a new site in tenant administration with SharePoint, it's going to automatically add the content types to the new site. This means that any new sites that get created will automatically contain my site catalog item content type and be ready for classification. Once my search demo site's created, I can jump over to it and just show you that if we go into site settings, so this is a brand new, just created site. And if I go into site settings and I go into content types, I should see my enterprise content types there. So without any additional work, now that I've created this site content type in the content type hub and published it, it's immediately available to all of the site collections in my tenant or if you're in SharePoint on-prem in your farm. So there it is, creating a content type, using the content type hub, publishing a content type to all of the other site collections. This is the fundamental foundation stuff that you need to know how to do in order to really make SharePoint search work well. Next up, we're going to do a create a custom list using that custom content type and then we can start searching for stuff. That's where it really becomes fun. Join me, won't you?